came back into the market in a very big way. What we know now is Wall Street can bring down Main Street. People are seeing this, and those memories of fear are coming back. When you have a 401k or a 403b, those kinds of accounts, they are incredibly susceptible to downturns. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than 900 points. More than 900 points. There are questions about how to best save for retirement. Part of the problem is confusion. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. Welcome to Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistole. Brad is a retirement and income specialist, primarily serving Springfield, but he's sought after nationally for his expertise in helping people secure their retirements. Mr. Pistole is a licensed life insurance professional in the states of Missouri, Arkansas, and Kansas, and he specializes in working with people who are near retirement and those who have already retired with wealth management, income planning, and asset protection strategies. And now, here to talk with you about securing your retirement, your host, Brad Pistole. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for Safe Money Radio. And as you know, if you've been listening for a while, it seems like about every other week here recently, I have a guest on the show. And so anytime we have a guest, if you're a radio listener, you can always go to YouTube and you can watch this online. So uh, if you're hearing this right now and you're driving in your car, don't worry about missing any part of it. You can go log on later and just watch it. But whether you're listening to the podcast or you're listening on the radio, Thank you for joining us on Safe Money Radio, and today we have my favorite guest. He's been on the show more than anyone else. Ed, we're getting close to 10 times. You've almost been on the show 10 well, times now. I'm going to wear so. out my welcome, but my oh, favorite never. time was when I was right there with you in Springfield. Oh, absolutely. That's right. So we, I know we've done a show together in Kansas City. We've right. done one together in Colorado. Yeah. We've done one together in-house here. We've done meetings together. We're going to talk about all that later, but yeah. here, here's what I want to do, Ed. We, we've never done this before when you've been on the show, but I think I realized here recently, putting myself in the perspective of all the people who are watching us all over the country now, it's kind of crazy, but you know, I know you really well. I had Heather Schreiber on a couple of days oh, ago. Good. She's a great friend of ours. Two weeks ago, I had Dr. Wade Fow on. Um, two weeks before that I had Tom Hegna on. And so I realized, you know, we're all colleagues. We see each other at the same events and we know each other. We're friends, but the average person, if they're turning on today for the first time and they just happen to hear us, well, they don't know anything about us. And so here's what I'd like for you to do. I would like for Ed Slot to tell us a little bit about himself. What kind of got you to where you are today? And just give us a little bit about your background. All right. Well, I was born in the- <laughs> <laughs> uphill both ways to school yeah, too right. I walked up to uh, right, uphill to school and uphill back and then yeah. my parents were tough I wish I was t- as tough as they were they had the right idea and maybe sure. pay rent the, the minute I finished college or get out and <laughs> the good old days anyway yeah I went to school I'm an accountant a CPA a tax advisor but early in my career, I'm so glad I did, and if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be here with Brad now. I realized for years I was doing people's taxes, like nah, tax time, you know, they come in, I was doing tax returns. This is my late 20s, I had my CPA, started my own practice, doing tax returns like most uh, new accountants do, and seeing people, and I found the first few years, I was all only giving bad news. And here's what would happen. People would come in, I'd start looking at their forms, and uh, I, I'd start looking up at them and say, oh, you know what you should have done, Leah? I should, oh, if you only did this, you know what we could have done? So it, every year was this woulda, coulda, shoulda. And I realized, luckily I realized this in my late 20s. I said, what am I telling people? I'm just looking backwards, telling them what already happened. I should be looking forwards and doing tax planning instead of tax preparation. 
tax preparation, which a lot of CPAs still do. In fact, I always say a lot of my colleagues, CPAs, are just history teachers. They tell you what already happened. In fact, Brad, I did a radio show right uh, about a week ago, a national radio, like you, you know, nice radio show. And as any radio show, you know better, so you wouldn't ask me that. But the, 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 there was a host. It was a, uh, you know, not a financial advisor show, a, a, a network show. So they don't know what to ask. So it's tax time. So they ask, oh, well, uh, Ed, tell us, uh, what can people do now to say they're doing their taxes? What can they do now to save on their taxes? And I let silence go for a minute. I looked in the camera and I said, nothing. Are we done? Nothing. They said, what do you mean nothing? Because that already happened. Unless you have a time machine, I can't go back and change last year, other than maybe an IRA or SEP deduction or something. You can't, it's already in the books. There's yes. a big difference between tax preparation, that's recording what already happened. Basically, I realized I was more like a waiter in a restaurant taking an order, or, you know, rather than planning out the future. So I changed everything about my practice. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be here with Brad today and went and did higher end planning to save taxes, not each year on your tax returns, but every year and for, for decades and beyond to beneficiaries where you see real tax savings over a lifetime and even beyond to beneficiaries. That's where I found value and that's where my clients found value because then they were talking about it and uh, saying, wow, look at these things, he's really doing planning. And yeah. uh, most uh, tax advisors don't do that. They, they basically still do tax returns. So what happened is I was doing seminars to uh, create, to build my own business. This is, like I said, late 20s, early 30s, so the 80s, early 90s, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I was doing seminars to build my business, but I never did seminars to attract tax return clients because I already knew I wasn't doing anybody any favors other than recording history. So I talked about saving taxes. The state taxes were very high then. If you remember, Brad, back oh, then, yeah. exemption wasn't even the 600,000. You know, if you had a house in an IRA, you were at a 55% estate tax. It was crazy. So yeah. I realized I could save people a fortune of money. And IRAs started coming on the scene. The 86 Tax Act gave us all these rules we're still working with today. And they've changed a bit. but very complicated and I realized nobody was talking about estate planning for what now is many people's largest single asset. I'll tell you what I did, Brad. Back then, say 30 years ago, I made a bold prediction. Here was my big bold prediction that anybody, in 30 years, anybody still alive would be 30 years older. <laughs> I know, it's amazing and it came Spot on. And I realize, you know, these people with their IRAs and starting out 401ks, that's going to be their biggest asset and it's going to be loaded with tax. And before yes. I came along, really, I don't even know of anybody else doing tax planning. A lot of people are doing tax and estate planning, but they weren't doing it specifically for retirement accounts because it was like the little stepchild. Nobody thought about those. So eventually I created a consulting business on just that back then it was a niche i guess you might call it a niche now but it's a big one because oh, yeah. where all the money is so right. my prediction was right in 30 years anybody saving for a retirement account uh, is going to have big issues getting that money out and not getting walloped in taxes so yeah. uh i created a, a programs what happened is yes i was doing more business in my own company my tax planning company but when I was doing seminars, financial advisors used to attend because right. they wondered, what is this guy up to? This is before the internet, by the way. So the only way I could advertise, like everybody did when I was doing seminars to get clients and build the business, was in the local newspaper. Right. So they would see my ads, half page ads. I did it every month, three or four seminars a month, like clockwork. So these people probably thought I was making a fortune. So they wanted to know, what is this guy up to? And, yeah. and back then they didn't really have financial advisors, as you know, Brad, they were more uh, what, what we call wirehouse guys, stockbrokers, yes. you know, the stockbroker guys. The financial advisor trend didn't really happen until maybe 10 years after that. But most of the people handling money were stockbrokers and they didn't know anything about tax planning, nor did they care. 
I'm sorry to say that's pretty much the case. It's the <laughs> truth. It's the truth. Uh, so they would show up at my seminars. And I knew who they were. They were the only ones sitting in the back in a suit and tie. The rest right. of the people were retirees. So yeah. yeah. And then they realized, oh, wait a minute. He doesn't sell any product. They thought I was encroaching on them. They were shocked to know that, no, I'm just doing tax planning. And I say it, as you know, in every seminar, every PBS show, I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities. I'm a tax advisor. I'm here to save you big money on taxes. So they started saying, wait a minute. This guy's not a competitor. Maybe we should have him educate our clients because we don't know anything about it. And yeah. over time, it morphed what I was doing, morphed into a new business of training financial advisors, the smart ones like you that realize, you know, it's not just about making people money. If it's in an IRA or 401k, it's what you keep that counts after taxes. So a lot of financial firms started hiring uh, to do national seminars everywhere. And then I eventually, as you know, started my own training for people like you, for financial advisors, two-day programs, our elite program, which you're a member of, focused just on tax planning for what may be most people's largest asset now, their IRA and 401k. But those accounts are loaded with taxes. It's a big deal now. So that's where I came from. I'm still doing the planning, but really sharing it more with advisors like you and training advisors because uh, that way more people can get out and help more people. Absolutely. And I tell you what, I want to say this real quick throughout the show. I'll give a number out just a few times, but if you're listening, you're, you're getting a special treat today. If you've never heard of Ed Slot, here's, here's what I always tell people. Well, just go to Google or YouTube and type in Ed Slot and then pull up a chair and have a buffet because you're going to be there for the next four or five weeks watching the hundreds upon hundreds of videos because he speaks all over the world. But if you want more information, if you need our, our help, just call us anytime, 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And so, Ed, I want to pick up right there where you left off. You, you talked about kind of your background, and then it morphed into you training advisors about well, future if, thinking. Well, uh, let me stop that. Yeah. Not all advisors. Many advisors still don't even want to go near tax planning. It's like kryptonite. They can't even touch it. You know, right. touch it, I'll turn to stone. They write it on their card. <laughs> We don't do tax planning. They have disclaimers all over the place. Then yes. you shouldn't be, and this is what I tell advisors. I was just at a conference two days ago, and I said to them, if you don't say I don't do tax planning, then move over because somebody else needs to do it. But the truth is they are doing tax plan. They just don't know what they're doing because they don't have the sophisticated training like you realize. You and other, very few others, less than 1% of advisors around the country do this kind of planning. Most advisors can make you money, especially in a good market. But it's the very rare ones like you, and that's why I'm on the program with you, with you that, can ha that ha create plans to keep it, especially when it's in an IRA. And I'm worried about future higher taxes on growing balances. These yes. IRAs are a problem, especially after Congress changed the laws and all of it has to come out in 10 years after death. There are still many complicated rules and this area is not only complex, but it's unforgiving. Many mistakes are irrevocable. You don't get a lot of second chances. You've got to have an advisor. I tell advisors at these conferences, I said, you got to have, bring the goods. You've got to be a rock star of planning. You can't lip sync or play air guitar here because mistakes <laughs> are costly. And that's yes. why you're in our elite IRA advisor group because you know you have a back office so your clients can be assured that even if you know the answer, and I know you do this because all of our advisors do this, the advisors are trained with us. Again, it's all training, nothing about product, it's all training and tax planning, but I'll bet you, you know, we have a team of IRA experts, I believe the best in the country, and By then far. you may be sitting with a client and you know the answer, but you still call one of our experts <laughs> just to make extra double sure, right? I have called them with clients with me and said, I absolutely think I know the answer, but I want to make sure. And so I'm going to call a team member and talk to Andy or Ian or Sarah, and it, it's just the only way to go. Right. And uh, if anybody watching this, does your advisor do that? Probably not. Number one, they didn't know what they didn't know, so they didn't know what to ask. This is, yeah. this is no way. It's like playing Russian roulette with your retirement savings. 
Well, Ed, do this for a second, because I brought one. I brought our most recent book here. I'm going to hold this up for people that are actually watching. Now, people that are listening can't see it, but explain what I'm holding up right here right now. Oh, you're explaining, uh, you're showing our last elite manual. It's funny you mentioned that because yesterday yeah. I just signed off on the next elite meeting i just signed off i go to the printer we put hundreds of pages of new material that's how much is changing uh, yeah. the last step in that manual i literally go to the printer myself like i did yesterday and i go page by page to look through it and you know i put it all together with sarah andy and i and we all contribute but even as i'm going through it i'm saying wait a minute this all happened in the last six months i got 200 <coughs> it's uh, the next manual is over 266 pages that's it. Of new material, but, of mistakes it, people made that cost them their life savings. And uh, and most advisors don't, I think the biggest problem with most financial advisors, they don't know that they don't know, and that's mm. dangerous. Well, I love it, Ed. You know, of course, I, you know me, I always, I'm up on the front row and I've got posted notes know, all, right in all, the through, front row, right? all through my book. And I, I opened up here yesterday and was just looking at, you know, this is our elite manual from our meeting back on uh, November 2nd and 3rd. You know, our next one's coming up. I've already booked my tickets and flight and hotel and all that stuff. And uh, so we'll see you here in the first part of May. But I flipped to the first page and it's Secure Act 2.0 Errors. And right. we went over, you know, mistakes that were made and how they're fixing what was drafted. And it's so funny because a lot of times you catch the errors, you see things that aren't right. And uh, it, it's just interesting that, like you said, so many changes are taking place all the time. And so I, that's what I want. I'm glad you already brought it up. I wanted to ask about the this Elite IRA Advisor Group. I joined back in 2010. I went to one of your meetings in 09. Yeah. So when people say, well, how did you learn all this stuff so quickly? Well, I was blessed to, to meet Ed Slot back in 2009, and then at least two times a year, plus we go to our meetings, but then I come to a lot of our two-day events, so I'm normally there three times a year. And then going to all the webinars, I know you sent out an email last week about something I didn't know, so thank God I'm connected to you, and I'm going to ask a question about that here in a little bit from one of the alerts that came out. But I'll say this, you know, if you're listening right now, maybe you were one of the people, we had about 120 people that were blessed to meet Ed Slot right here in Springfield. He came last September. We had this big event at, uh, at Bass Pro at the White River Convention Center. We had like 50 people on the waiting list, and it was awesome. He, and that's when he was here in studio sitting right next to me. We did our last show together here. You're but, lucky Ed, I showed up. I was having such a good time at the museum and walking around. Uh, I mean, I never saw anything like that in my life. It was so cool to, to, to hear you get to walk through Bass Pro and to get to go through the aquarium. And uh, that's it's just a neat experience. If people are watching, they've never been here. you got to come to Springfield and go to the world's best aquarium. And so. they have a great restaurant. I had two meals. I forget the name of it, but up on the uh, above the uh, the caveman stuff or whatever it was. Hemingway's. Yeah, Hemingway's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, let's do this. Now we're in 2024. So last year, the event, that's all gone. And like you said, Congress has met since then, so we know there's changes. So now we've got Secure Act 2.0. We've got all these ramifications. We're still working out what all the changes mean. What are some things in 2024 that you think people are going to need to pay attention to from, from changes that have taken well, place? Some of the basic things, uh, it's funny you ask that because when I, I have a new book coming out too, you, you'll, it's a, uh, it's this book, but the 24 version, it's going to be green and the, okay. uh, the title, you haven't seen it yet because I just got the cover, but it's green and it says, the name of it is the retirement savings time bomb ticks louder and they made the name louder, <laughs> the big because I'm worried about future taxes. And remember what's new now, we're getting closer to 2026 when taxes are supposed to go through the roof. Even the president's budget just came out, kind of more like a wish list. So don't worry too much about that. I just saw it today uh, yeah. about higher taxes. But if they do nothing, we go back, those tax cuts go away after 2025. So we're in 24, you got two years to act and take advantage of these low rates. So some of the basic things I always talk about are even more important now, like looking at Roth conversions. Uh, and I'm not saying everybody should convert to a Roth 
Well, actually, I, I think everybody should convert to a Roth because I, I right. love tax free. As I said in your program, who doesn't love tax free? I never had anybody complain that they uh, don't have to share with Uncle Sam anymore. No, I want to share. Uh, if you yeah. remember at your program, I said you want your plan, not the government plan. And somebody, I think, asked, Ed, uh, what is the government plan? Maybe I'm interested. And I said, no, you're not interested in the government plan. I'll tell right. you what it is, though, since you have to, have to know. Uh, that's easy. That's doing absolutely nothing and let the government determine how much tax you'll pay and when. You want to take control of your tax rates, and that's one thing you can do with the Roth conversion, taking advantage of today's low rates. But this is another one of those areas I would never even approach it without talking to an advisor like Brad, because there are pros and cons, and there's taxes, and this is one of those areas that's irrevocable, unchangeable. Once you convert to a Roth, it's that's it. It's irrevocable. You can't right. undo it. No backseas, no second chances like it used to have. So yeah. I would tell you, if you have an IRA or a plan or, or a, a large account balance, uh, at a minimum, you should have a conversation with Brad. I'm not saying pull the trigger and do the conversion. I would never do the conversion until, say, after Thanksgiving next year, when you have a better projection, a better estimate of what your income will be, like the first week of December, capital gain distributions come out. Maybe you got a bonus or you got some inflow of money that you didn't think about. Uh, for example, I just transferred, I was working on my own taxes and I almost forgot about an annuity I had that I switched over and there was some gain in there and, uh, and I, you know, I wouldn't have known that. So you really don't know until I'd say the first week in December, but now you should be having the conversations right now so you can plan it. And Brad is well equipped to look at your IRA and say, maybe we should convert some personally I think everybody should start a plan even before RMDs begin, required minimum distributions, because they begin at 73. Once you hit yes. 73, that's what I call the government plan. Now, most of it is out of your control. But in your 60s, the plan should be to take down this IRA. I always say your IRA is an IOU to the IRS. It's a sitting, growing, building, compounding debt. It's a debt you owe to the government. Uh, and start taking it down. So do a series of smaller annual conversions over time, bring down your taxable money and bring up your tax-free money. Who wouldn't want more tax-free? You know, one of the things I, I, uh, I never said this before, but I did this program and I accidentally used, it's a long story uh, in Florida a couple of days ago, I used the wrong word, I, I guess I was watching too many commercials <laughs> and uh, the word Ozempic came out of my mouth because it's everywhere. <laughs> it is. And it then is. It today, you know, when I do Brad's show, maybe I can use that. I think your IRA needs Ozempic. It's too fat. It's yeah. loaded with taxes. A tax, the IRA, it's got to go on a diet. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But the bigness is not so much growth. It's it's money that's going to go they're going to be lost in taxes. So I'm saying for the first time uh, ever on Brad's show, Ozempic for your IRAs. Uh, you can use that, Brad. I, I don't know if they get the point, but you know what I mean? They're getting a little big. The market is going up. We ended last year, the end of 23, with the highest all-time market year-end balance. And, right. Benny, and that's good. But it's also good for Uncle Sam and you Great taxes. Uncle Sam as a partner on your gains. So let's start uh, getting a nutrition plan for your IRA and start slimming it down. Get rid of the fat, the taxes, Uncle Sam's share. So you keep 100 percent of your money. That's why you want to have a conversation about this right now while we have historically low rates. And one of the things I always do, and I know you have a copy of it, I always show people the history of tax rates because right. people don't know how good they have it. Yeah. We have, you know, back in the years that I was born, the baby boomer years, I mentioned that at your seminars, uh, 1946 to 1964, the top federal tax rate exceeded 90, 90. 90. I may have to write that out because you don't believe it. 90. Right. 90. I'm not reading upside down like it's 60. No, it was 90. 90%, except for the last year, 1964, when they lowered the top federal tax rate all the way down from 90 something to only 77%. And I, I hear that the whole country did a happy dance. I wouldn't know, I was only 10 years old watching the Beatles, but that's what I was told.
yeah. that they thought 77% was a great rate. The top rate, that's more than double today's top rate. Remember, these are taxes that will be paid, not if, but yeah. when. And the key to keeping more of your money, and Brad knows this because he sat in on seminars with me for almost 20 years or so, it's to get that money out while taxes are on sale. Well, we have the biggest sale you'll ever see right now. Well, I'll tell you this, Ed, because we're, we're about to talk about that. It is a great segue. And I, I know this. I heard some ambulances and sirens in the background. And here's the thing. And this is why we're going to talk about this in the next segment. Uncle Sam's going to turn the sirens on at some point in your life. He is coming after your IRA, your 401k, your TSP, your 403b. If it's tax deferred, the sirens are coming on and he's going to say, whether you want to or not, you're getting in, you're riding with me, and I'm going to take my portion out of your account. So if you want help with this, then just give us a call. We, we do not focus on what a lot of people do, which is uh, just how much we can make inside your account. It's not what you make inside the account. Ed's been saying it for 30 years. It's what you get to keep from that that matters. Okay, it's what counts. So we will show you how to keep more of your hard-earned money. Call us anytime at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And as soon as Ed's new books come out, I'm going to have them here. So I'll be able to give you access to that. But you can call anytime. You can ask for a copy of my book, Bulletproof, the Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan that Ed wrote the forward to. So... Call us anytime. There's always someone standing by to take her call, and we're going to jump right into the next question. So, Ed, here's what I want to ask. We know we're talking about, the, you know, the fat lady's going to sing. It's time for us to go on a diet in our <laughs> in our company plan. The taxes have got to come out, and there's all these rules for when they're going to have to. Here's one that people, they're trying to learn about right now after the Secure Act 2.0, but they don't fully understand it. So let's talk about this. What happens when a non-spouse oh, no, beneficiary... Don't Okay. Don't go okay. there. You'll get okay. hurt. You'll get hurt. Just okay. ask Brad. <laughs> yep. Yep. It, well, it, remember, most IRAs, let, let me take you back. Years ago, we had something called the stretch IRA. It's not in right. the tax code. Uh, you won't see the word stretch IRA. It's just something we ended up calling the ability for when you die. Let's say I had a large IRA, 300,000, 500,000, a million, whatever. And then you die and it goes to the beneficiaries. They got to defer out based on their life expectancy, 20, 30, 50 years. So the yeah. tax was minimized over a long deferral period. Congress didn't like that. Uh, and in the SECURE Act, and I always laugh, I, you know, I always say this, and this is true for 40 years of my studying tax law. Whenever Congress names a new tax law, you can almost always bet whatever they name it, it will do exactly the opposite. So when I saw the name Secure, I said to myself, hold on to your wallets. And yep. sure enough, the Secure Act killed that big break for your beneficiary, said no more stretch IRA, except for certain beneficiaries, but not most mainly your children and grandchildren, they're going to have to take all that income in 10 years. Even yeah. if tax rates stay the same, when you push a lot of income into a shorter window, you're going to have an explosion of taxes. Isn't that the way uh, the way a fire hose works, right? When you right. push a stream of water, if, if the hose was this big, you know, a 60-year window, it would drip out, right? Right. But when you condense that, that opening or closing that window to 10 years, you're going to get zapped. Not you, the beneficiaries, but it's your family money. The fam more of the family money is going to be lost in unnecessary and large amounts of taxes yes. that can be avoided. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. Um, I know that, you know, we've been talking about taxes a lot and financial planning. We're into 2024. It's an election year. Everybody is always concerned. Oh, it depends on who the president is. If this pre this person's the president, it'll get better. You know, really good people have said, you know what, here's what tends to happen no matter who's in the office. Things tend to stay about the same. They really do. But you have all these different tax laws, of course, that are taking place depending on what's going on. And when it comes to the SECURE Act and non-spouse beneficiaries and other things like this, here's what Uncle Sam hopes you don't know. He hopes you don't know all the information we're talking about on the show. He hopes that your advisor doesn't know. He hopes you, you just kind of put the pillow over your head. You, you don't ask any questions, and you just keep, keep on kicking the can on down the road. But So I want to ask you this because it's the big question. We talked about it a little bit. To convert or not to convert, you know, something that's tax deferred into something that's tax free. Let's talk about 
I know there's a lot of advantages for, and I'm yet to meet someone that I did a conversion for that came back three, four, five years later and said, you Brad, I'm I. so mad that you helped me Matter convert. Matter of fact, in every case, no matter how much they paid on the conversion tax, they were thrilled. I had clients that came yes. back to me years later. They converted when I begged them to do it, when Roths came out. I remember one teacher back in 1998, that's when Roths came in. And, and back then, you couldn't, I mean, this is an extreme example, but he's one of the few clients that actually listen to me because, you know, they all like the Roth till they see they have to pay the tax up front, but you got to look at the big long-term picture. He, he understood that. He was a teacher, and back then, you remember, uh, when they first set up Roths, you couldn't convert if your income exceeded $100,000. Well, yeah. him and his wife were both teachers, so combined, they were over 100000 Do you know what this guy did? Because he saw the light, he said, you know what? I'm going all in on this Roth. I see the light. I want tax-free for the rest of my life. Him and his wife took a sabbatical from their wow. teacher's job so they wouldn't wow. have, so their income would come under 100000 and yeah. he converted everything. Yeah. Well, that was back in 98. He was near retirement. They each had about a half a million in their IRAs and they converted jointly a million dollars that they were able to do because he took the sabbatical. And all his teacher friends, all short-sighted, said, oh, what a, what a moron, this guy. He took off six months from work just so he could pay tax? Right. The guy died a couple of years ago with an $8 million tax-free Roth IRA. Wow. That he wow. paid for on only 500,000 of. Maybe it cost right. 200,000 of tax to build an $8 million tax-free Roth IRA. That's not a bad deal if you look long-term. Now, yep. he did well. Uh, obviously, you're talking about long-term gains from 98 up till he died in uh, maybe 2020, 2022, whenever it was. Had the whole stock market run up and stuff like that. But it was all for him. It w Remember, he bit the bullet. He paid the tax. Everybody laughed at him. All his you know, big teacher friends that thought they knew better because they were only looking, oh, what does it cost me up front? No, what do you get for your money long-term? Look right. at the big picture. Meanwhile... He, he ended up with an $8 million tax-free Roth IRA. And back then, I, I don't remember if he died before or after the SECURE Act. It didn't matter. Even if in the SECURE Act, his beneficiaries could continue if they inherited a Roth to grow it for 10 more years tax-free. He yes. never shared with the government any of that Roth IRA for the rest of his lives, and neither will his beneficiaries for 10 years later on. That may be $10 million tax-free by the time the beneficiaries have to take it out. So th there's a great story uh, on the long-term impact of doing something now, paying tax now. That That is so super beneficial to our listeners. Just, just think about this for a minute an $8 million IRA instead of a Roth, if he would have died and had not paid the tax when it was on sale back in 98, what would his beneficiaries receive from 8 million? It, oh, and it, it wouldn't be 8 million. <laughs> and, it w and it was on sale because he did it the first year when you had that four year spread. So he yeah. got to spread the tax out over four. That that's not a rule now. That went away like a couple of years. You know, you had that. They got rid of that right away. Right. Uh, but uh, and they also got rid of the rule in case you're thinking, oh, 100,000. That that rule went away in 2010 uh, when uh, Congress eliminated that. It used to be before 2010. If your income exceeded 100,000, you couldn't convert. Now you can. So that rules away. But yes. he had the foresight and the planning ability to do it. And uh, it was amazing. You know, he was committed. He saw the benefit of looking long term, how do I create the most amount of tax free wealth for me and my family down the yeah. road? Yeah. Well, friends, if you're listening to this right now, and I know there's a lot of terms, so maybe you can, you, it's easy to get confused. I will say, I'll, normally when it comes to alphabet soup, IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, 401as, it's confusing. That's why you need to be working with a retirement income certified professional who knows what they're doing, and understands all this stuff. And there is power to converting to a Roth, and we specialize in Roth conversions and tax-free vehicles, and we can show you exactly how to do this in the most painless way. There's always pain in paying a tax, but <laughs> certainly you'd rather pay $5 versus $500, right? So we're going to show you how to do that. 
Call us anytime at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Just ask for a free financial consultation. We'll look at what you have going on, where all your assets are, what you're invested in, whether it's tax deferred. Um, thankfully, more and more people have tax-free buckets, but we want to talk to you about the importance of maybe increasing those tax-free buckets now while taxes are on sale. So call us anytime at 866-780-7233. So Ed, a couple more quick segments here. We're so grateful for you being on the show today. I, I know this. I've watched this emerging trend here for over the last few years. Uh, you know, Hunter and I both went through the American College for the Retirement Income Certified Professional Program, and you were one of our guest instructors. We got to see you on video, which that was awesome. But I know that you're you're connected to the American College, and like I said earlier in the show, you know, Heather Schreiber, who's connected to the college, was on a couple of days ago. Uh, Dr. Wade Fowl, good friend, he was on two weeks ago. Talk to us a little bit about you know, there's this word that was a bad word for so many years. It got so much bad press, and you already said it on the show. You used a four-letter word. It actually isn't a four-letter word, but it was back then. It's the word annuity. I whisper it sometimes, but you talked about owning an annuity and some changes you made with it back in December. Why is it that the annuity word was such a bad word years ago, but now all these retirement income professionals like Dr. Wade Fowl, Dr. Michael Finca, they're all saying, no, it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing, and it's there's no longer a discussion about whether or not you should own one. It's a matter of how many you should add into your portfolio to, to give yourself a complete plan. So why do you think the attitudes changed on annuities and life insurance and things like that? Well, I think the word is getting out. And first, I have to say it again in, some, in case somebody just is tuning into this segment. I'm a tax advisor. I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities. So, you know, I'm unbiased, objective. But I did this myself based on what I saw it did for my mother who died in her 90s. And yeah. my father died many years before that. And uh, luckily, my mother had a good advisor, somebody probably like you, Brad. And when she sold the house we grew up in, he knew she was like the Energizer Bunny. She was going to go a long way. And he said, you're need, going to need guaranteed income for life. You don't want to worry about the stock market in your 70s, 80s, and 90s. He set her up with uh, four or uh, five of these annuities. I forget how many. It, and we didn't know. His, uh, you know, I was younger then, and I, we didn't know. Uh, what a great gift that was that she gave to us. You know what the gift she gave to us, uh, the three kids? She gave us the gift, and this is the greatest gift you can give to your family. She gave mm -hmm. us the gift of her own financial security. That's yes. the greatest you g gift you can give to your family, the gift of your own financial security. Or to put it another way, the greatest gift you can give to your children is to not move in with them. <laughs> Yes. All right, you get the drift. You, you well, smell when I'm cooking or whatever they say, right? Right. So my mother got these annuities, and it was amazing. These checks came in for years and years, every month, like clockwork, no matter how old she got, no matter how sick she got, no matter how the market performed, she could count on these checks coming in. And she loved getting those checks, even... A, even I told this story, I think I may have told this story at your program, but if not, I'll tell it now. Uh, she had a smaller ap apartment. I'm in my office in Rockville Center, Long Island, New York. She had an apartment. I could almost see it here, so it's very convenient. I was her main caretaker, but uh, but she was at the hospital at the end of the years, uh, end of her years. Uh, but she was still feisty. She was feisty right up until the end, and she would still order me around, just like old uh, <laughs> And she would call me up. And, to, and she would know just when those annuity checks would be hitting her mailbox at the apartment. And she'd call me up, Eddie, get down to my apartment. Go into my mailbox. There should be three or four checks there. Then go up to my apartment, get my deposit slips, and bring them up here to the hospital. Well, I, all right, Ma, I'll go right there. You know, I'll be right up. Uh, <laughs> she called you. You run. I'm dropping. Nope. The president's on the phone. No, I got to see my mother. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know how that is, right? So yes. I run up there. I get the check. Sure enough, she's right. There's three or four checks there. Uh, and then I find her deposit slips and I bring them up there. And by this time, our hand is shaking near the end. But there was something about watching her one by one take each check and endorse it with the name of the insurance company and then write the name of the insurance company and the check amount on the deposit slip then yeah. doing it again on the next check 
and on the deposit slip and on and on. And then when she had them all on the deposit slip, she would add it up old school by hand. Yeah. Who yeah. does that anymore? Nobody. Right. Uh, right. And then she would have me take it to the bank. And I watched this process in awe. And I said to myself, this is the epitome of absolute financial security. In yeah. fact, I remember looking at a checkbook near the end. I said, Ma, you only have like 600 bucks in your checking. What do I care? I get new check, new money every month. In yeah. her mind, she was spending like a drunken sailor. Like she wasn't <laughs> really, but she knew she had these checks coming in for the rest of her life, no matter what. To me, that's the epitome of financial security. So the only thing better, uh, to me, there's nothing better in the world than guaranteed income for life. But there's one thing that's better. I learned from my mother. And if you've been listening to me on Brad's show, you know what I love. And I combine the two. The only thing better than guaranteed income for life is guaranteed tax-free tax income for life. So what did I do? In my Roth IRA, I have uh, some annuities there. Why? Because if I need f guaranteed funds, it will come out of the, I hope to leave it to my kids. They have the death benefit and all of that. But if sure. I ever needed them, it comes out of the Roth tax-free, income tax-free. I never have to worry about future tax increases. That's the big benefit of the Roth, the, the elimination of the uncertainty of what future higher taxes can do to your standard of living in retirement. So it's not only guaranteed income, but it guaranteed tax-free income. Now, just to be clear, my Roth isn't loaded up with annuities. I have a stock portfolio there, but I nice. use the annuities as a guardrail, as a buffer, as a defense against downside risk. So I can play both ends. I can be more aggressive in my stock portfolio, and I have it backstopped, like I said, with a guardrail of these annuities. So I, my rule, if you had to have a rule, is you should have guaranteed, just my rule, it's not a rule anywhere, but uh, whatever you're, and it's different for everybody because everybody has different financial needs. But my rule is whatever your number is for your basic monthly living expenses. I think, yeah. say, between Social Security and annuities, and Social Security is an annuity, by the way, Right. Uh, uh, that should be covered with guaranteed income. You can't have a situation where, oh, the market's down, can't pay the light bill this month, they'll have to wait. No, yes. <laughs> the lights are going off. Uh, right. You know, and, and some people say, well, they hear the things on TV, you know, uh, remember, nothing's perfect for everybody, but I hear right. people saying, oh, I'm gonna stop this annuity. Oh, well, then I ask those people, should you stop your social security checks too? Because that's an annuity. I mean, I don't understand it. There's and your pension. <laughs> your pension's an annuity payment. Right. right. You want to stop your pension? Stop your, because that's an annuity. Yeah. The only thing is, from the insurance company, at least in my opinion, you'll do better. And that's why I have them myself, not for everything, but yeah. as a protection against downside risk. Perfect. And, and those of you that are listening, you know, you know what happened in 2022. For so many years, it was stocks and bonds, stocks and bonds, and the bonds were there as the protection vehicle, or so we thought. And then 2022 happens, and bonds go down more than stocks. And that's why so many income specialists, people with their PhDs are saying, hey, the bonding, the bonds, which not that they're terrible, but they have kind of been replaced by annuities. And it's more of a stocks and annuities when it comes to the guaranteed specific guardrail that's there, because then you also have guaranteed income. So I, I want to talk about one more thing. I want to share a story. If you're listening right now and you want more information about this, just call us 866-780-7233. Actually, in my newest book, Bulletproof, The Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan, we talk about all these things, about the market, about annuities, about life insurance, about taxable, about tax-free, and about getting rid of the tax tumor that's inside your 401k and your IRA. And Ed was gracious to write the forward and to give some great analogies in that book. And so if you'd like to read a free copy, just call us. We'll give you one, 866-780-7233. So... Ed, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I want to do one more segment, and I want to use an example because you were talking about your mother and her owning four, three or four annuities at the end of her life and how special it was to get those paychecks coming in all the time, and that's, that's powerful. I appreciate you sharing it. Now, I want to share a personal story too because you know a lot of people who have listened to the show know my father was in financial services for 52 years. He worked for Merrill Lynch for 17 years. Uh, and then he came to work for me the last seven to eight years of his career. But here's what's interesting. You know, 
Dad worked at Merrill Lynch in 01 and in 08 when he was 56 and 63, and he went through two major market crashes at the wrong time. It was a perfect storm. But you go through those crashes and you go through all the ups and downs. That can be okay in your 30s and 40s, but when you're 63 and you're about to retire, it's not a great thing. So my dad, for the first time ever, he was an annuity naysayer. Never buy an annuity. Well, then he buys three of them <laughs> when he's 63 years old. And thankfully, I talked him into converting one of those to a Roth. I wish he would have converted all three. But, you know, he was like a lot of planners. He just looked at the investments and getting them into the account. He didn't do tax planning. He didn't think about conversions or taxes. But thank God he did because my father passed 18 months ago, and he left three annuities to my mother who is now 77 years old. And because my mother was married to a financial advisor, she never did any of the math. She didn't balance the book. She just knew everything was always there. And now I have had the joy of what you experienced with your mother, with my mother. I now know she's like, okay, Brad, I'm relying on you to make sure that I can pay the light bill and pay the electric bill. Right. And I'm like, hey, mom, here's the great thing. Dad bought these annuities years ago. We structured them. One of them's completely tax-free, and it automatically comes into your checking account every single month. She doesn't even have to fill out a deposit slip. And so the beauty of watching the last 18 months, knowing my mom never has to worry about running out of money, is such a powerful thing. So I'd, I'd like to have you talk about this one more time because I've learned that this is something that kind of has to seep through people's brains. So if someone's listening to this right now and maybe they're 20 or 25 years old and everyone's saying, sign up for the 401k, it's the best thing in the world, they're going to give you free money. Why should they consider signing up for the Roth 401k instead of maybe the traditional 401k? What's the benefit to them long term down the road? They, first of all, no young person should be contributing to a 401k or an IRA. You know, yes, you get it again, short sighted thinking, you get a deduction up front, but a deduction for making a contribution to an IRA or an exclusion from income for contributing to your uh, 401k, that's nothing. You give that back. That's just a loan you're taking from the government that they're going to hold it over you until you come to your retirement years and they say, good job, you really built that account for us. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, us? I thought it was my, no, this is us. It's a, this is a joint account, buddy. That's what your IRA is. It's a joint account with Uncle Sam. Uh, most people don't look at it that way. It's a joint account, but it's worse than a joint account. As most married couples know, if I have a joint account with my spouse, we each own half. If you have a joint account like an IRA with Uncle Sam, you don't know what his half is. That's, it may be right. the much bigger half. Maybe right. it's 60% or 70%. And it all depends on how high taxes will be when you come to cash in at retirement. I'm telling you right now, taxes are low. No young person uh, should be putting in anything but Roth IRAs or Roth 401ks at work and also building up tax-free life insurance, cash value life insurance. I have it myself. I started a little late, but my advice is start building up every bucket of tax-free vehicles, the Roth yes. IRA, permanent life insurance. Uh, I, I got the permanent life insurance. Matter of fact, I switched, I had it for years actually, but I switched just about 10 years ago because uh, that was a, when I first learned about the uh, long-term care rider, which was only available, I think it just started coming available then, and right. I have it on my long uh, on my life insurance policy, and I know it was about 10 years ago because I did a 10 pay thing, and I'm on the next payment is my 10th pay, and I watch this cash value go up. It's I think now uh, last I look, I think it's more than I paid into the policy, and it's all right. growing, income tax free. I love anything that grows income tax free. The worst thing to own now is an IRA and a 401k because it's loaded infested, not invested, infested with taxes. We need to put it on a diet and get rid of those taxes. That's, that's so good, Ed. This, this last segment's been worth all of it, but if you don't realize this, if you don't believe what we're saying is true, here here's a little test. Just go take a distribution from your 401k. You'll find out. 
if it's a traditional 401k or tax deferred account and you don't believe us, take a distribution. And you're going to watch all these rules happen. Well, were you under 59 and a half? Uh, well, what's, what's where are all your other income coming from? Are you married? How about their income? There's all these things that you get to eliminate when you've converted to something that's tax free. That's why the majority of my, I own seven annuities. The majority of them are Roths. Um, that's why I own eight life insurance policies, permanent cash value life insurance policies. I want all my buckets, my safety buckets, tax-free so that I can do what Ed Slot has said to do. I've been listening to him since 2009, following every single thing he says. When people say, how did you develop your personal portfolio? By listening to America's IRA expert, Ed Slot. I asked him what he's doing. I do the exact same thing. And I know this, I want all my baseline expenses when I retire, when the time comes for me to turn the water faucets back on. Yeah, that's never happening, but all right. Keep well, it won't. That's a street. <laughs> but whenever I want to give the money to my kids, because that's what's going to happen. I want to know they get all of it, right? They get to keep every bit of it. Uh, baseline expenses should be covered from something that's permanent, that's guaranteed, and that's tax-free. So, Ed, any last advice? Any words of wisdom you want to throw out before it's we wrap so up easy. the show today? Tax-free is always better. You don't have to share any of your earnings anymore with Uncle Sam. All right, tax-free is always better. That's the promised land. That's where you want to get to. That's the holy grail. It costs something up front, but look what happens when you get to the tax-free promised land. Nothing like it. I did it all myself. Everything I talk about, I've done for myself and my own family. So good. Friends, in both my books, Safe Money Matters and in Bulletproof, the Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan, there is a dedicated chapter just on why tax-free beats taxable every day of the week. And so we, we want to lead you in that direction and so that one day you can really appreciate when 2026 happens and when $34 trillion in debt goes to $40 trillion in debt and we pay the piper, you're going you're gonna to say, thank God I listened to Ed Slot and Brad Pistol so many years ago. I got rid of all those taxes, and now all of this money is mine. I don't have to share any of it with Uncle Sam. So make sure that you're setting up something today that's going to be forever tax-free, and we can show you how to do that. Call us anytime at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And Ed, thank you so much for joining us again on the show today. I love being here and spreading the gospel. Tax-free is always better. And you know, we're coming into the holiday season. I don't know when this is going to be shown, but we have Easter and Passover, and they always show on TV the Ten Commandments, right around that time? Right. It took them 40 years to get to the promised land. I'm telling you, <laughs> you can do that right now with bread. <laughs> That's that's so good. That's good. 866-780-7233. We will show you exactly how to do this. Everyone have a great week. Ed, we'll, we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Well, I'm about out of time, and I would like to thank you for listening to Safe Money Radio. If you're serious about your financial future, give me a call, and together we'll get your retirement savings on the fast track to accumulation while reducing exposure to market losses. Thanks for listening, and until next time at the same time, I'm Brad Pistole, reminding you to stay safe so you can step into a secure future. Save money radio, your money savings You've been listening to Safe Money Radio with your host, Brad Pistole. Find out how to contractually guarantee that your hard-earned money is safe while avoiding market loss so you can have the retirement that you deserve. Call Brad Pistole now for your complimentary Safe Money book and Safe Money information kit at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Safe Money Radio, your money safe. The preceding information does not represent tax, legal, or investment advice. Surrender charges apply to base contracts. Optional lifetime income benefit riders are used to calculate lifetime payments only and are not available for cash surrender or in a death benefit unless specified in the annuity contract. Fees may apply. Guarantees are based on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the insurance company. No information presented today should be acted upon without meeting with a qualified and licensed professional. Obviously, by calling us now, you are just taking the first step towards protecting your retirement. It's important that you read all insurance contract disclosures carefully before making a purchase decision. Rates and returns mentioned on this program are subject to change without notice.